I'm split down the middle, like all our analysts are, and yep. it's a tough one to pick, isn't it? It's, it's a combination of having a new addition to the Chiefs roster yep. in Lim. He's got big shoes to fill. Everybody said it, but Ground Zero have got the confidence, the synergy of the past few weeks to lean on, and hopefully that's going to get us through some tough moments. But look, that international experience from Sydney Chiefs as we jump into the first game of the best of five. Perth Ground Zero, they were close to making RLCS, but they did not, so now they're time for redemption. We begin game number one for the first game of the day. And Sydney Chiefs will be proving that they're still in form with Jake and Torso. As we said in the best of five series, this is just that touchy-feely stage where basically everybody's sounding on another out, seeing how things are going to pan out. More importantly, seeing how Lim's going to fit into this roster. And he has a, a role to play. And whether or not he can stand up to the pressure that I no doubt Perth Ground Zero are going to put him under, it's going to be all found out here in this first game. Be about these rotations. Jake said he was a supportive player, but he's been pushing up as of late. And it's been making a real difference for the full Chiefs roster. Does it come through? Xerix tries to get the ball away. Delusion there for the centre as well. Can Jake get back in time? Great save. A slim opportunity, but he finds it. And for Xerix, now back on the defence. Torso's trying to run away with the ball. Coming in off the international stage. These guys will be monsters. But Siki holding out as well. And so far for Perth Ground Zero. Possession split right down the middle. Having Lim in that lineup, as we said, is going to be very, very key for Chiefs' performance because in Rocket League, there's only three players in the field. There's not a lot of moving parts. You need to make sure everybody's in synergy, everybody's in sync. And I mean, so far, he's doing quite well, but this is only early stages just yet. Bit of pressure coming out from Perth Ground Zero early on in the piece and just, I guess, testing Lim to see whether or not he's ready for this. But there are two other players in this lineup to worry about, and those guys can score from anywhere on the field. So Look at that, Torsos with the save up. Immediately, Perth Ground Zero having some shots on goal, and this is the one opportunity for Perth Ground Zero. When the Chiefs have come off their international stride, they've struggled to readapt back into the Oceanic meta, and maybe this is something they can be taken advantage of. Delusion with the pass centre, but Torsos is there first, and this is beating the Chiefs out to the ball. That's what you have to do. Siki comes down, and it's already been taken away. The Chiefs' opportunity strikes as Torsos right in front of net. It's going to drop down, and it's not going to be a follow-up whatsoever as Sirix tries to steal it away. That pitch will go over the top, rolling into net, and Sirix gets the first goal. First blood goes to ground zero, and I'll tell you what, that is, is difficult, but it's the kind of pressure that uh, Perth Grounds are putting on the ball. They're contesting everything, and they're going to need to maintain that pressure against Chiefs if they want to get themselves off to the best possible start in game one. But what a start from Perth Ground Zero, and a lot of people would have pitted it to the Chiefs, but again, coming off that stage, let's see how they change. 1-0, Perth Ground Zero on the defensive, but it's not a long-winded attack from the Chiefs. It'll be lobbed up by Lim, and Corsos hangs back. Sirix going in for the ball, but he doesn't get it sick. He's the last defender here. Coming off the side, the bump away, Jake with the angle. A save from Delusion though, and on top of their game, Perth Ground Zero, they do not want to drop a game. Delusion's been a key player. Well, Ground Zero, but oh. tell you what, Torsos, give him an inch, he'll take a mile, and that is a nice piece in front of him. Oh. Great passing play, Jake just holds it up, looks for his teammate. What a great infield pass, honestly, beating out all three members of Perth Ground Zero. That's something only Jake and Torsos can do, and immediately the Chiefs, you pull back, you say, are they in their form? You say no at first, then you change your mind pretty quickly. And there was a smug smile there from Jake too on the camera. He knew his contribution to that goal was key. And he's going to look to uh, find another here, but ground zero. It's important that they maintain pressure. Keep going at it. Keep pushing that ball through. And mate, more importantly, contesting that ball and trying to be yep. to it. Speed is going to be so important for these guys. Boost management is going to be important because that plays a key role in making sure they get to that ball first. Perth Ground Zero, the disciplined squad that can play fast. Siki, the pass is there and they send it over to the left wing. Now for Siki, can he get it over the top? The answer is yes for one, but not for Jake. Delusion waiting there and pushing up into the midfield. Perth Ground Zero in a good position, but a save away by Lim. And I have to say, he's sitting in front of this net and he's doing a darn good job to start things off. But Xerix comes in for the intercept. It's right in front of net again and Delusion, although he won't get the sit up to go into that infield pass. This will be Siki there again. Oh, crossbar there from Torsos. Coming close. Chiefs just reminding Ground Zero of their ever present threat. They're always looking for that opening, always looking for a gap in the defense. And they're going to take shots from wherever. So if they're not careful and they don't contest everything, Ground Zero can find themselves easily 2 1 down. So it's very much in the balance right now. These two teams, normally it's a very uh, laid back affair that first game, but this game seems to be very much a contest. Trying to get goals on the board, 
trying to get confidence going into the next couple of matches. He saw Lim was trying to push up again, but the Sydney Chiefs, they weren't able to get through. This is a mistake, though, and the Chiefs had an opportunity. Lim was there, toss off. Goes wide, not something you normally see. A minute remaining, and somehow Perth Grand Zero, they'll launch their counter-attack, and Syrix with the angle gets saved away by Jake, and I have to say, the Chiefs missing a couple of these balls, but they come back hard with the defense. Uncharacteristic from Torsos as well. He doesn't normally miss those, but he did go wide in that instance. And both teams have had chances in that next spurt of play, but Siki just asking a few questions of the defense. Torsos answers quite well. The backward play is definitely the broach that Ground Zero are going for. Just a few bumps in back play as well, just trying to offset that defense, but not paying dividends just yet. And that delusion comes close and really, he said offsetting the balance, I like that. The first Grand Zero has been so important so far. 20 seconds left remaining and it's one apiece. I'm not sure we expected it at this point. Jake there with the centre limb. A narrow miss there from Torso as they try not to collide. They're at the right side of the field, but for Perth Ground Zero, one big clear is all it's going to take. And Syrix now around the corner. Can they get themselves in the right position? Siki dunks it down, but this one will just hit the ground in the midfield. It's our first overtime in game one. Overtime in game one. As we said, we knew this was going to be a close contest. This is case in point. Game one already, they're going for it, Ned. Oh, no. Oh. But tell you what, Lim finds that opening. He was unchecked in that middle, straight through, and... He puts an end to game one. But I have to say, Lim, it's great that he came up for the ball. Sometimes we've seen these, I, I guess you, at the moment you call him a substitute, you say these initial third players, they don't come up for the ball. They play pretty passive in overtime, but he read it well. He came up in Sydney Chiefs. Game one belongs to them. Yeah, and I mean, it was a close contest. You look at the, the spread there. There were certainly chances created by both teams. If you look at uh, shots on goal, both these teams have created chances going forward. And one goal was the difference there. So it's the accuracy at the end of the day. And when you get the chances against a team like Chiefs, you have to put them away because they're very well capable of scoring goals. And they just proved it then. Yeah, really, it was one melon that got them in the lead. It was two and one at the end. And I think this seeding to start us off will actually define how the rest of the series going. What I'm talking about is in game one, it was only that one goal. This could really set the tone. And it, and it did. And it did. And um, from Ground Zero's perspective, they were certainly in the mix for a lot of that match. There was pressure from both sides, which was really good. The rotations, actually, from Chiefs. It took a while in the early instances to get those on point, but they warmed into that match. And that's exactly what match one of a best of five is, is Great making sure that awesome. everybody is in sync. And it's difficult for Chiefs because, as we said, they're bringing in Lim. They're yeah. bringing in a new cog in the wheel. Mm. And nice. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't copy, compliment you again then. It's, I'm a difficult person to compliment. Yeah, I don't right. take them easily. Very punny though. Yeah, I'll, I'll save those for later. But in terms of now game two, Ground Zero are going to be turning their attention to getting themselves off to the best possible start. They know what they're up against. They know that these guys are going to be looking for outlets. Jake is always putting pressure on that backboard, always looking for a goal. And it's just a matter of whether or not Ground Zero can just do what they've done so well in the last couple of weeks and get themselves back into the match. This is actually the first game that they've dropped in the entire league. That's right, Perth Ground Zero at six and zero, and that wasn't just score, that was full game wins. Now it's over, one nil, and Sydney Chiefs take it into game two. Got some Chiefs fans in the audience, and you know why the organization has had backing for one of the longest times here in OCE. Jake now, the shot through, it's gonna be defended well. Sirix, that's a great touch. Can he take it through? Last defender is Torsos. He dribbles it to no avail. Jake with the touch over to Torsos again. The one, two, three. Lim comes up and tries to cheek to the ball, but Torsos is already there for the Chiefs. Is this their opportunity again? Jake there, the dribble through the air. Passes it down. Lim, he can't really hit it. It's a hard angle to hit. Very tough angle to hit, and unfortunately, as we said, he didn't hit it, but very direct from ground zero early on. They're going straight for that goal. Syrix just trying to capitalise on any lapses in defence and he knows that he has to make something happen for his team. Chiefs, they're a tough team to beat. It's going to require something special from each and every one of them. What a pass back though. Lim there tries to tuck it over his hood. He comes close again for the Chiefs. The pressure's being applied but the counter-attack is always there from Perth ground zero. Lim comes off that left-hand wing and Torsos is there for the touch. Syrix not up to the ball. Torsos just sends it over. And that is a great piece of play here. Passing, just looking on point, even from Lim there. Great contribution. Torsos just puts that one over the defense nicely. Not a lot that could be done there, even though they tried their best. And I mean, for me, telling already in this matchup is maybe the fact that Delusion's been a little bit quiet 
for Ground Zero. He's normally been such an outlet for them. He's dangerous in front of goal. <laughs> Jay reminds everybody uh, why he went overseas in the first it place. It was bound to happen from the Chiefs. Torsos sets up the kickoff goal. And just an unfortunate touch from Zerix there. Ziki tries to recover it. Tries to recuperate. But right now, when you go up against the Chiefs in a disadvantage, it is a struggle to come back. Perth Ground Zero. Put pedal to the metal. Torsos. Just needs to be equal to that Siki with a bit of a run, but it is going to be cleared out here by Jake. In fact, he's going to try and run it out, but Delusion looks for that opening. Very nearly found it. Torsos just reads it quite well, pushes it away. But as I was saying before, Delusion, he's going to be key for Ground Zero in getting into this match. He yep. said his shots on goal have been absolutely awesome. His conversion rate on those shots has been instrumental in, I guess, putting Perth Ground Zero in that 2-0 and position in the season. But this is really where they're going to be tested. Whether or not those nerves have actually truly been settled or not, the Chiefs are a whole different ball game for these guys. They know they're number one in the region. They know they've got a tall order against them. So it's uh, it's a different kind of pressure that you feel. That's right. For the Chiefs, I think Lim is fitting in really nicely. Toss off, double touch, Freddy. What a shot. Welcome home, Toss off. <laughs> and just a smile of acknowledgement there. <laughs> that was insane. Love it. Delusion tried his best to get there, couldn't get there in the end, but I mean, Chiefs, this is confidence for me from, from game one. They certainly up against it, and I think Ground Zero might have lost their swagger a little bit, and they need to recapture it, quickly recapture that vibe, yep. and get themselves back on the board. You have to remember, when you're going up against the Chiefs, it's a whole different beast. Right now, set up for Jake, and as we hit the backboard, Torsos comes in. A different beast with a different smell, a different smile there from Lim. He'll go wide, but for the Chiefs, Lim fitting in nicely again, and you have to say that Torsos, Jake, the experience they bring in really, really valuable here. So he comes in off the wall at the good centre, but they just can't get there. Down the runaway, and that one's open. Another goal goes over to the Chiefs. And that's that's the, uh, the risk that you run when you're trying to get that goal. You're pressing all your members of the team forward, and they all committed too far too forward, and that resulted in a, a breakaway goal. And as we said, with, with three people on the field and you commit numbers four, trying to get yourself that uh, first goal on the board, it can run away from you. But Chiefs are certainly very much comfortable right now. Lim looking like he was there all along. He hasn't looked out of place and he's been contributing quite well. And they're looking very, very comfortable. It's very much a case now for Perth Ground Zero. Just reset. Whoa. Maybe get a goal on the board here. That well, might give him some confidence. Maybe, because Jake's just set it up nicely for Lim. Lucky Sirix was there as the last defender. He'll clear it away. And the Torsos and Jake still playing really well together. You've got to give it to them. And Lim fitting the third perfectly. That was a banger of a shot from him as well. Torsos comes in. They've committed up. Jake with a pop-up. But Chiefs, right now, they're feeling pretty safe, even though Ground Zero getting down this side of the field. And you have to look at the consequences here. Perth Grand Zero take your losses. Lim. Oh, at the boy. moment, yeah, look, they've run away. If they take a loss here in the series for Perth Grand Zero, then they start getting worried. You know, they've already got two series wins. But what happens when it gets to playoffs? What happens when these guys face each other again? And the Perth Grand Zero had that in the back of their mind. It always serves as a great mental edge to get one up over your opposition, particularly in the league season. But... That passing play from Chiefs is so on point. Even as we said, the last player, Lim, got in there. Nice touch with the wheels just to soften it a little bit, take the edge off it. There was even a third player coming in again, looking for that final sequence of play. So it wasn't needed in the end, Lim getting the goal. But, I mean, Chiefs, they're stringing those one-two passes together, looking fantastic, looking confident. Five goals already. And the thing is, too, they're not just settling for five goals. They're constantly putting pressure in the backboard, even from deeply set in the field. And that just keeps Perth Ground Zero on their toes the entire time. They're never really going to feel comfortable in a game where they're oh, constantly under pressure. No. But this could be that. another goal. Lim, his, his shot is cleared off the line, but so much pressure and it's constant coming out from the Chiefs. Now nah, for the Chiefs, look, they've secured this victory. It's going to be 5-0 at the very least. For the Chiefs, one of the most dominant victories so far in the Gfinity Elite Series. And remember, this is a squad who has just done it all. The first team ever in OC's history to make it to day three of the World Championship. They've come back with a bang, even though it's only two of them. They've done enough here in game number two. Now, first round zero would be about making that reverse sweep and looking for more opportunities. Enabling delusion is what we've talked about.
That's right. And Sirix and Siki, they're going to be the guys to do it in the sense that they've got the experience. And they're going to need to dig deep here because Chiefs are a whole different ball game to everybody else they've played in this series so far. We know that coming into this, they were the number one Rocket League team. And they've certainly proved it here in the first two games. Oh, yeah. And backs up against the wall now for Perth Ground Zero. They're really going to be tested. The question is whether or not they get their passing game going. They're always looking disrupted. They were slow to the ball in a lot of instances there. And game two is a very different, uh, uh, very different affair. Looking at those shots across the board, look how many saves are coming out from um, the Ground Zero guys. They're constantly under pressure. Constantly under pressure. I mean, it's not just that. They're getting better touches. It's the Chiefs. Like, experience is sometimes used a lot in Rocket League. But I think it's something very important. In other games, you say, oh, experience, you know, yada, yada, yada. But the Chiefs have been in front of a studio audience, a live audience, excuse me. The Chiefs have been in front of a camera many times before. There are going to be no nerves whatsoever, whereas Ground Zero in the Elite Series, they took time to get to this point, even though they had dominant weeks. That's right, and Chiefs just bring a different level of play in the sense that they have different gears they can go through, they can play multiple different styles, and you yep. said that the challenge for them was actually readapting back to the OCE style of play and they sometimes have trouble doing that. They're looking really comfortable early on which is really worrying for Ground Zero because now they're 2-0 down in this series. It's a best of five. One more match and this could be over. But not just that, OCE just doesn't play as fast and for Perth Ground Zero, one of the faster teams, it's still for Chiefs. Things might be going in slow-mo for them or they might just be like, we've, you know, we've, we've beaten Envy, we've beaten an international team twice, three times. And now we're looking at Perth Ground Zero. It's going to be no nerves whatsoever, but a game three on the lines, maybe Perth Ground Zero, this could be their first loss and the first zero three. Well, it's certainly been their first uh, game losses as well. So that's a, a, a bit of pill for them to swallow. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it is a bit of melon, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. But in terms of what they need to do now, they need to get themselves recentered, and they've got a bit of a break now to do so. Well, we are going to throw to that break. Speaking of the devil, when we return, game three to see if Perth Grand Zero can fight their way back against the Chiefs.
Welcome back to the G4 Elite Series live on One and Twitch. We hope you're enjoying the action. We're looking right now at one of the sweet goals from Torsos we just saw. Some of those skills that got into the world champs. Huge stuff. Right now, let's cross to the best co-host we could find with limited time. Uh, it's Ashley Wells. I don't write this stuff, guys. I do. I absolutely do. Uh, Ash is hanging out with Justice Robo. How's he feeling ahead of today's match, Ash? Better than you will later. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm hanging out with Justice Robo. Um, how does it feel watching the guys playing? How does it feel being in the audience for once? Yeah, really good. It's a good experience, like especially watching these guys that have been to international tournaments. And yeah, they're really popping off today. And how, would you, how do you feel when you're playing in front of a live audience? Does it really add a lot of pressure for you? Uh, not too much pressure. Like you do feel a little bit of nerves, but yeah, you go with the vibe, and yeah, it's all right. How do you prepare for a match? Like, what have um, what have Raw been doing all week? Because you guys are the third match of the day today. Uh, we just practice a lot. Um, obviously, we try to get a, like minimum of like three hours practice per day type thing. Um, but yeah, and also a lot of solo queue and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you were playing up there, I mean, what would you be doing differently? Um, if I was ground zero, I'd be playing a lot more consistent, but yeah, to Lim, like Lim's playing really good today, um, so is Torsus and Jake, so yeah, the strong opponents. Nice. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me. Best of luck for your match coming up today, and back to you, Luke. Thanks very much. Some cool dudes up in the top corner as well. We noticed you guys, don't worry. It's time to return to the action. It's game three between Perth, Ground Zero and the Sydney Chiefs. Back to you, Jim and Jake. Thanks very much, Luke, and welcome back, folks. By the way, my grandfather says 5 p.m. for bingo. I hope that works okay with you. In this game three, <laughs> I think he says it's all right. That's great. Yeah. In game three, Perth Ground Zero have an opportunity to start creating the upset here, but they have to switch on. I think as much as Justice Robo wants to trash talk, in all, in all seriousness, consistency is key. Like, he, he is partially right. It is. You can't do anything if you don't do it consistently, right? Yeah, well, I guess so. And particularly in, ter in terms of uh, sure. <laughs> Ground Zero offer here, they have been a great team in the first two weeks, but this is their real test. They haven't really come up against the quality of opposition that they're going to be facing in Chiefs, and I think they realise that now in Game 2. And, um, I mean, in terms of what those two players in Jake and Dorsos bring to the mix, they bring that level of pace, that passing play. We saw them working really well in pairings, and Lynn was just providing a nice uh, piece for them to, to latch onto, but... Now, this is the real test for Ground Zero. Well, we'll find out, ladies and gentlemen. I know the audience is behind the Chiefs, but for Perth Ground Zero, this is the chance to come back into this game. And for the Chiefs, immediately, oh. they say, no way, Jose. That they do, and I tell you what, it didn't take them long to crack the Da Vinci Code that is the defense of Ground Zero and has been in the last few weeks. I mean, that's a hard one to read, all things considered. Perth Ground Zero, you think that's going in, Lightly hits that side post and rolls over to Torsos. A big start for Sydney Chiefs, only 30 seconds in for Perth Ground Zero. This is their opportunity. Chiefs dribbling the ball up the side, he'll win it over. Delusion, last defender. As Torsos commits forward, it's only Lim hanging back. Jake rotates as well. They'll run into each other. You can see that maybe a little bit of inconsistency with the third man there. Jake with the dribble, Siki. Ends up winning it over. Lim passes it forward, it's a good pass. Actually taken out of the race as Torsos. Delusion, is this it? Sirix the pass there over the top, hits that backboard, will immediately be ready, but they come back in. The defense of the Chiefs, always something that's to be feared. Over the past few weeks, the other teams have had a lot of difficulty dealing with the pressure that Perth Ground Zero have been putting on the backboard. This week, Chiefs, they're just absorbing it so well, they're pushing that ball away, they're not letting that, board, uh, that backboard dictate play. And that is the difference here, because it doesn't allow Delusion to come into play, and Delusion has been so critical for per Perth Ground Zero. This week, he's had minimal impact because he's not receiving those balls off the backboard. We'll walk forward anyway. Consistent or not right now for Perth Ground Zero. They've just got to fend off the Chiefs. A good little bump there from Jake, but Lim will have a shot. Delusion saves it away, and Torsos immediately back up for the ball. The angle was ripe, but unfortunately picked too soon. Three minutes, 15. Off the wall now for Torsos. Comes back in. And for the Chiefs, still that one goal. A lot more demolitions coming out. The aggressive play from Perth Ground Zero. Does it do anything for the Chiefs? The answer might be yes, but Torsos comes back in front of the net and saves the ball away. Delusion still here, but unfortunately right now, Perth Ground Zero have to commit everyone up. And if they do, the Chiefs will launch that counter-attack and it will be bad news bears. 
And we only want good news here. So as far as Ground Zero are concerned, they need to make sure that they maintain some level of pressure here. They actually spent the first two minutes of that half defending largely, and it's due to the fact that Sydney Chiefs can string so many passes together, they look so comfortable in back play, and when they can maintain that possession through passing play, it makes it really difficult for Ground Zero to find any sort of rhythm whatsoever. And as we said, Delusion so key, he's not even really getting a chance to, uh, to find his uh, stride in this match at all. Well, still 1-0. This is the biggest issue right now. Perth Ground Zero being pressured once again. He'll hit off the wall. Torsos already hangs back, and they don't have to do anything but play for time. As for Ziki, a wide clear will go back over to Torsos. Lynn commits. Jake hanging back again, the supportive player. He's been very aggressive over the past six months. Bring it back in, the Sydney Chiefs working well together as a unit. They bring it up again. Sirix can't get the touch and immediately possession, no. Ziki comes back in, commits forward. Delusion there was an opening, but no one went up for the ball. And Perth ground zero, I'm not sure if that's going to come around again. Because the Chiefs get one demo, they almost breach into the net. The attack continues. Just now, potentially an outlet, but Delusion actually has to track back, make sure that ball does not go in the back of the net. And the passing play from Chiefs is coming into play again, tries to sneak it in the bottom corner. Couldn't do so, Sirix now with a chance. But he needs to find himself some boost quite quickly because he's run out. And this is where Chiefs, again, just look so comfortable, that passing play again. They use Torsos and Jake, they're pairing up so nicely. These guys have had a lot of game time together recently, and it's certainly showing as, uh, again, they just keep blocking out Ground Zero's advances. He's the defender. Delusion doesn't have much boost to play with. The setup there from Chiefs. It's about to bounce in. Jake keeps it in front of the net. Siki, although he'll get a soft clear, the bump's coming out left, right, and center from the Chiefs, and they're disrupting the play. It'll hit the backboard. Jake goes in, swept away by Delusion. Siki with the clear on top, and can Torsos get there? Onto the backboard. Siki back in, but another touch that comes from Torsos is absolutely perfect. Chiefs are just one step ahead in every element of this game right now. They're reading that ball well, they're anticipating it so well in the air. More importantly too, they're beating out their opposition to the ball, so that there's absolutely no read that Perth Ground Zero can make while that ball is in the air because they know they're getting beaten out time and time again. So, Delusion here, he's going to need to look for an opening. It's still one goal in it, still anybody's game and it's 20 seconds and they're going to be fast and furious. It's going to be one last play from Perth Ground Zero, if anything, and Chiefs are just going to shut them out. All the way to the other side of the field, 10 seconds remaining. This is it for Siki. Can he keep the game alive? The series almost done. A Perth Ground Zero could take a 3-0 loss here. The Chiefs have done what they can. They've done what they've needed to. Sirix, Siki, last play. A massive clear, but it's going to be dunked down the Chiefs. 3-0 in week three. And so convincing as well. They did it so easily from start to finish. Game one was interesting because it was always going to be a question of how Lin would fit into the picture. How he would replace one of the best players in the yeah. play. And he certainly stood up to the task. The player that's come out of the draft, or a player that's actually stood in some pretty big shoes for week one and two, had to go up a size in week three. And he's, he's certainly risen to but the But you top. know what? For the Chiefs, I saw that and I saw that was, that was great. Don't get me wrong. But for the Chiefs, I think they had a lot of fun with that match. That's a very difficult match for Perth Ground Zero. And... I know with all the weeks coming up in the Elite Series that there is going to be some change. There is going to be that improvement that we've wanted to see over the season. The Chiefs are just a whole different monster. When you go internationally, you first these other teams that are so fast to the ball. You come back and everything's like in slow-mo for you. The Chiefs read the plays. 